I don't know, what is success? It's different in everyone's eyes, isn't it? You've got to be in the right place at the right time. Ten people like my song, that's good. If one person likes my song, that's still a success to me. I don't need money to be happy. It depends how you, how you quantify fame, doesn't it, really? You can be famous for five minutes, can't you? And then you can disappear into nothing if you've not been successful. And most musicians on the island can be quite lazy as far as their self-promotion or that sort of thing is concerned. What's lacking even more is the support for the local music. I feel if the people went to the mainland and made more of an effort to get onto the mainland and play, rather than playing here, you'd get a lot more further. But you've got to have the balls to go out there and do it. And a lot of people don't. With two world-renowned music festivals and strikingly beautiful landscapes, the Isle of Wight has long been considered a vibrant creative location. So why is it that there seems to be a surprisingly low level of island musicians breaking out and attaining national recognition? Is it, as many people claim, because of the large body of water, locally known as the Solent, separating the Isle of Wight from mainland Britain? Or is there something else getting in the way? I think a lot of people look so, so very inwardly in terms of success, uh, not just musicians, but lots of people. And it's also, you know, the, the actual cost of getting off the Isle of Wight is pr quite prohibitive. I think if you look at a lot of successful musicians, very few of them come from a position of being some dirt poor person. They've all got, they've all got some kind of edge of comfortable financial backing to them. Yeah. Whether that is because they get spotted after their first gig by some management company who then chucks loads of money at them and says, right, we're going to put you on, I'm going to organise this. So yeah, management is a big, big thing. So, you know, promoting yourself is, 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 is actually the battle to making yourself. People are not going to just notice you just because you're brilliant. You know, however brilliant you are, you might have 50 of your mates going, oh my God, that song is amazing. Well, yeah, yeah but that 50, <laughs> that's 50 of your friends, they're not, going to, they're not going to give you the amount of money that's going to make you a successful musician. Early music as a whole. Very opinionated, very one track. Seems to me that everyone is looking through a letterbox at the whole thing. I don't know, I, I, just, I just feel like they, they, people could be a bit more tolerant to other, other music, other music styles. I feel like on the island, you can't really go very far. Um, there's obviously Platform One and the festivals on the island that give island bands and DJs the opportunity to play at these festivals, but you get people playing the main stage and then you never hear of them again. This is The Vex an upcoming island talent who, in their short time together, have already played on the main stage of the world-renowned Isle of Wight Music Festival. As a band, the Vex play regularly on the island music scene and have a strong following of young island music fans, but is this enough? Do they want more? I think the island's a pretty good place for music, um, like, considering how small it is. I think that if a band wants success big enough, they will try, you know, push the barriers, they will like, escape this sort of barrier they call the sea of the island. I think they'll do it if they want to do it. I think they definitely have to make the move at some point in their sort of career as a band. The ferry costs to get off the island are prohibitive. Where's the logic in that? There's no, there's no kind of fairness or anything like that in fairy costs, are there? But that's, that's a, like, you know, that's a whole other kettle of fish. Is this true? Is it the cost of travel to and from the Isle of Wight that prevents island musicians from making it? Is that the barrier, or is it just an overused excuse? I guess money is probably a little bit of a factor, but also I think that the Solon as like a barrier is a bit of a big thing because. Like, it's kind of having that ambition to go a bit further afield and like to realise that there is something bigger out there, bigger than the Isle of Wight. If you're maybe just on in any island, it doesn't have to be the Isle of Wight, 
yeah. then you know if you're the big thing then you could just stay it's there and be happy and do that you know yeah. or you could go out and challenge yourself you've got to be in the right place at the right time we've got some fantastic bands and musicians on this isle of wight and they've never made it glenn taylor from isle of wight radio Glyn's show, Live and Local, focuses on promoting local talent and giving musicians around the island a chance to play on one of the best radio stations in the south of England. Yes, I would imagine to a certain degree there is a bit of a barrier because you've got um, the, the, the ferries and the, the, the stretch of water, but that doesn't stop 60,000 people or 90,000 people coming across for the festival and the best festival each year. Uh, can you name any bands from the Isle of Wight? Uh, oh, God. No, I don't. Fair Attack Club. The operators. Mm -hmm. This way up. That's, yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of some more. Like, we're, we're big Bees fans. I think the Bees are an island band, but I'm not too sure on that. The Switch. Um, the Dead Perrys. It's clear that bands from the Isle of Wight are making very little impact, even on the local scene. But is it really the bands that are at fault, or just their inattentive audience? You've got plenty of people that would go down the local pub and see a band playing covers on a Friday night, but if you mention, oh, they're an original band, they go, <gasps> can't dance to that, can't, can't go and watch that. And that's the problem that you've got over here, and it's different on the mainland for certain as far as yes. supporting local music yeah, is so concerned. What do you think they can do then? We educate everybody that lives on the Isle of Wight to go and support local music, which is what I've been trying to do for the last five years. And I guess because it's in a concentrated environment that it is that way, and there's people who've been famous for a short time, and like because they haven't really evolved their practice as much as they could have, they want they, why it they disappear. Yeah. Marco Agajani, aka DJ Macro, is a music producer from the Isle of Wight and performs his unique style of house regularly on the island dance scene. I'm Marco. Um, my DJ name is Macro with a four. It's original. Um, I'm a DJ and a producer. Um, I've been producing two years now, year and a half, two years. DJing about the same. Um, I produce a lot of electro, um, but I take influences from a lot of other genres like um, hip hop and uh, um, dubstep, some metal influences, as you can say. I'm a music maker, it's my other band member, and uh, there's the other two boys. They're my boys, and uh, my speakers, that's all we've got in here at the moment. Kind of just entered this kind of scene where I, I kind of started getting really into doing a lot of different stuff on my guitar that I realised that I could do electronically as well. So I think that's where the, the change over happened. Music's so hard to get into now the industry. Um, there's so much music. They all want just singles, they want hits, they want money. So it's, it's, you've got to be, you've got to know what you're doing to do it. We've got websites like Bandcamp stuff. It doesn't cost anything to upload your music onto your website, so you can have people listening to your music for, for sort of free. You don't have to pay to get your music heard. So I think, I think loads of record companies that do search internet a lot for sort of new bands and stuff. So I think it is good in that way. You can upload your songs freely and promote them online. You don't really need to go out and have a PA and have a management team. Behind you, you just need to get a mic, record what you want, and upload it. I don't think it's anything to do with how the islands progress or anything like that. When I create music, it sort of comes from different things. So I could be creative here from looking at something, but again, if I lived in a city like London, I could be creative there too because it's the surroundings around you. So I think the Isle of Wight as a location can be very creative for sort of your mind and doing things like that. I think it is a good place for musicians to start. We entered this competition called Medina Battle of the Bands. It was, our, it was like our first gig as well, so we were all pretty nervous. We didn't whether to do it, but we just done it just because we wanted to do it. And then we ended up winning it, which was quite cool. And um, we sort of won that slot from that. So we're all very pleased with that, sort of, with what happened then. I think there is, there's some, 
there is so much creativity on the island with music, there is a lot of it, so I think there is potential for bands to do it in the future. Uh, you know, the Isle of Wight Festival has been reborn for 10 years. I'm not sure that actually... Yeah. But actually, there's an awful... I was going to say that doesn't actually promote island music. I don't think they, 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 they both do in a major way, but it gives you opportunities. I think you have to kind of... You have to get outside of your comfort zone to grow. Like, you have to do the things that you don't like in life to get to where you want to be. But I think on a small scale, you kind of got to be, you've got to have the drive to actually go and organise yourself. So you're going to have to like call up pubs and go around. You can around act as your own manager yeah. as long as you find the right places to go. If you think about like venues, like there aren't that many available. I mean, we've lost in the last 12 months Ride Theatre, we've lost the studio down in Newport, Event the Winter Gardens. That's three big venues um, for the island. Yeah, there's a few studios on the island. There's obviously people who are trying to help each other out. But if, I feel like if you're out of that kind of zone of group of people, you don't really get a look in. Maybe that's just me um, being lazy and not communicating with everyone else. But um, I feel like there's a lot more that can be done. I feel like we're putting nights on, but we're putting the same people on every night. I think creatively, there are lots of other places that you can go and you can go and play. There's a lot of other interesting venues that you could actually potentially go and do a gig. Don't just think creatively in terms of how you make music, think about it in terms of promotion. A lot of the reason why a lot of people never really get anywhere in music, whether it's on the Isle of Wight or wherever it is, is because they don't actually realise how much hard work it is to just, just to promote yourself. If you've got a manager that's doing it, it kind of takes that away from you. When you start off, I suppose it's hard getting contacts and knowing other bands, so I think, yeah, putting on your own sort of things and promoting yourself is very important. Oh yeah, I'll build a bridge. I'll build a bridge. Serious.